Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment... Pursuit! Pursuit. A criminal strikes and fades quickly back into the shadows of his own dark world. And then the man from Scotland Yard, the famous Inspector Peter Black, and the dangerous, relentless pursuit. When man hunts man. To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Here's a taste treat you can enjoy indoors, outdoors, at work, or at play. The cool, long-lasting mint flavor refreshes you. The smooth, steady chewing helps keep you fresh and alert. Adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Now with John Dana, starred as the famous Inspector Peter Black of Scotland Yard, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum brings you tonight's story. Pursuit of the man who couldn't go home. How long has he been there, Mr. Babcock? Over four hours, Inspector. Somebody down in the street saw him, and I I turned in the alarm. Anybody in the room now? Uh, only the chambermaid, sir. The man who talked to her, he swears he'll jump if anyone else tries to get near him. Oh, it, it's a frightful thing for the hotel, Inspector. Frightful. Have you been inside? Oh, no, sir. The divisional inspector tried, sir, but the, the man nearly jumped. All right. You better stay out here. You're going in, Inspector? Well, don't worry. I won't let him see me. It was ten o'clock that night when I received the call at my flat. He was registered at the hotel under the name of Ralph Jarrick, and at a little past six o'clock had stepped through the window from his room out onto the ledge seven stories above Oxford Street. When I arrived, the crowds were blocking traffic for three squares, their heads turned upward, and there was a terrible anticipation in every face. The beams of three searchlights converged to pin to the wall the figure of the man above. As I entered the room, I thought of those expectant faces in the street. Aren't you tired, Mr. Jarrett? I know I'd be. You must be awfully brave to stay out there like that. I'm very tired, Nora. I think I'll go now. No, don't, please. You mustn't do that. It's wicked. Besides, I'd miss you. You like me, don't you? I want another cigarette. Will you get me one? Of course I will. You'll be a love and stay there now, won't you? All right, but don't be long. I'm getting tired. Of course you are. Come in. Nora will take care of you. Might even give you a kiss if you're good. Get me a cigarette. Half a tick. What are you doing in here? Do you want him to jump? I'm Chief Inspector Black of Scotland Yard. You think that's going to make any difference to him? Can you get him to come in? Oh, I've been trying for three hours. I don't think I can stand it much longer. Uh, we're trying to get a net down. Oh, don't do it. Hmm? If he sees it, he'll jump. I know he will. Has he told you why? Poor beggar must be balmy. Says he killed the man and he can't go home. Oh? Did he mention a name? No. Please give me a fag for him and get out of here. If he Nora. sees you... He... He's right outside the window. Don't move. Coming, Doc. Who is that? You told me there was no one in the room. You lied to me. I didn't, honest. I had to get a cigarette for you, didn't I? Well, this gentleman was kind enough to oblige. I don't believe you. He's a policeman. I'm going to jump. No. Oh, no, Mr. Jarrett, no. Well, you're a nice one. Look what you've done. You've made a cry. You ought to be ashamed. 
Why don't you come in and apologize? You don't have to speak to me like that. I'm not mad. I know what I'm doing. Who are you? I'm from Scotland Yard. My name is Black. Black. Have you got a cigarette, Black? Yes. Yeah. What's this about killing a man? Nothing to do with you. Bring me the cigarette. That's close enough. Stop now. What was his name? Doesn't make any difference. Light it for me. All right. What now? I'm going back along the ledge. Put the cigarette on the sill. I'll count five. If you're at the window before I'm finished counting, I'll jump. Very well. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Here it is. I don't want it. My stomach hurts. Well, come in and I'll get you a doctor. It hurts. I want another glass of water. Give me another glass of water. Yeah, uh, give me your hand. I can't. I can't. Wait, hold on. I'm coming out. I can't uh, hold on. I can't. It hurts. Hurts. His body was removed, and except for the name under which he had registered, there was absolutely no identification either upon his person or in his room. And so the next morning at Scotland Yard, the meticulous process of establishing identity got underway. And the answer came sooner than we'd expected. At 11 o'clock, Sergeant Muffet, who had been waiting for the report, came into my office. Well, Muffet? I've got the report, sir. Ah, good. Who was he? Not Ralph Jarrick, sir. Oh? According to the fingerprints, he was Edward Tilton. Criminal records office? No, sir. War office. Oh? Yeah, let's have a look. He's dead, right. sir. Oh, really, Muffin? No, sir. I mean, he, he's dead. He's been dead for six years. Oh, he can't be. No, no, they, they, they must have made a mistake. That's what I thought, sir. But it's the same man killed in action July 1944. Destroyer in the Mediterranean. HMS Plover. HMS Plover. I'll be blown. Yes, here it is. Body not recovered. Did you notice that, Moffat? I know, sir. But I don't imagine many of them were. She was hit by two torpedoes. Magazine went up. Not much left. Except Mr. Ralph Jarrick or Edward Tilton. Now, oh, there can't be any doubt of it. Yeah, let me see. Survived by brother Richard Tilton, wife Amanda Tilton, and father Cedric Tilton. Hmm. Is it down, sir? Uh, where is that? Just south of Falmouth, Moffat, near the oh, coast. Oh. Lizard House. Well, what about that killing, sir? I mean the one this poor devil said he did? I don't know. There's something quite odd about it, Muffet. Lizard House. <laughs> Rather grim-sounding place, Muffet. I think we'd better have a run down there. Right, sir. The name Lizard is given to a peninsula whose tip constitutes the southernmost point of England. Our destination, Lizard House on the Downs, was an extraordinarily hideous structure which seemed to fit quite naturally into its unattractive, fog-laden setting. And it seemed to Moffat and me, when we met them at first, that the Tiltons themselves had absorbed the dull unpleasantness of the place. Who is at the front door, Richard? The police, sir. Police? Should have used the back door. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Tilton. I'll know better next time. You're new here. You'll learn. What do you want? Constable? Chief Inspector Black, sir, of Scotland Yard. This is Sergeant Muffin. Not interested in who you are. What do you want? Concerns your son. Richard? Nonsense. No. Edward, Mr. Tilton. Edward? I think there's been a mistake. I'm afraid not. Your son died last night in London. Oh, then you've got the wrong man. My brother was killed during the war. Uh, so the war office record stated. However, they were in error. But we received an official wire. Oh, no, you're wrong. It's absolutely impossible. Please understand that this is a most unpleasant duty. Unpleasant but boulder dash. The whole thing is poppycock. But were it not, you people revel in situations like this. You love it. 
Father, that's unfair. I refuse to entertain these blue-nosed plumbguffs in my house. I go to my room. I'm sorry, Inspector. Sergeant. All right, sir. We're used to it. My father makes it a point to loathe authority. Uh -huh. If what you tell us is true, and I can't really believe that it is, how did he die? He fell from the seventh story of his hotel. Suicide? Edward? Well, if this is true, I hope we can keep this from my wife, Amanda. She used to be married to Edward. Oh, really, sir? We waited for three years after the war. There was always the hope that... Yes, 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 I understand. Now, Mr. Tilton, I wonder if you would be kind enough to accompany us back to London. We need positive identification, and I imagine that you want the body returned here. <laughs> I know you're wrong about all this. It's ridiculous. But I suppose you can force me to go with you. Not at all, sir. We thought that you'd want to. Tomorrow morning would be satisfactory. No, I'd rather go immediately. Uh, again, Inspector, it's better if Amanda knows nothing about this. She's not at all well. Only take a moment, sir. It's all right, Inspector. I can look. Do you identify this man as your brother, Edward Tilton? Edward. Yes, it's Edward. Edward. Where has he been all these years? Why didn't he let us know? Why? Come along, sir. Why did he do it? What possible reason? We're not sure, Mr. Tilton. He spoke of a killing. You talked to him? Yeah, for a minute or two, yes. I tried to stop him. A killing? Yes, yes. We have assumed that such was his motive for deciding to take his own life. He, uh, He did kill a man. Ten years ago. Go on. It was in Lizard. Edward fought with one of the villagers, an older man. They were in a tavern. Edward was drunk. Father came in and saw the whole thing. He testified in court that it was self-defense. The magistrate was a friend of father's, and Edward got off scot-free. He was guilty? He was drunk, and he beat the man to death. Well, that clears up the killing, then. Things were never the same between Amanda and him after that. He knew it, too. It must have preyed on his mind. Inspector, I'll see you for a minute. Yes, Mother. Sit down, Mr. Tilton. I shan't be a second. right, sir, about the way he died. Poison? A lot of it. Dr. Bishop is sending you a full report. But here's a strange thing, sir. According to the analysis, the poison would have killed him within an hour. But he was on the ledge for four hours. Which means, Moffat, that poison was administered while he was out there. And following that, Edward Tilton was not a suicide. Edward Tilton was murdered. <laughs> To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, full-bodied, real mint flavor cools your mouth, moistens your throat, freshens your taste. And the chewing itself gives you a little lift, helps you keep going at your best. So for real chewing enjoyment that's refreshing and long-lasting, always keep Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. Helpful, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum will make every day more enjoyable. Now, the second act of Pursuit of the Man Who Couldn't Go Home. The pathologist's report was on my desk when Moffat and I returned to the office. As I read it, I could see, once again, the man on the ledge, beginning to double in pain. I could hear him asking for another glass of water. I remembered his desperate hand clutching for mine in an effort to save himself. No. No, no, he couldn't have done it, Muffet. But he could have taken the poison, sir. 
so that if he lost his no, nerve... No, 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 he didn't want to die. He tried to save himself. Now, we know he was given water while he was out there. We know who gave it to him. That chambermaid, sir? Right you are. Miss Nora Wales. Oh, is, is the brother settled? Yes, sir. I suggested that you wished him to remain in London. He'd be staying with a friend in North Kensington. Oh, splendid. Come along. <laughs> Miss Wales. Yes, sir. Oh, it's the inspector, isn't it? Yes, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, I, I suppose it'll be all right. Mr. Babcock doesn't like us to talk about things that go on in the hotel. Well, I've already spoken to him. Oh, well, in that case... Miss Wales, I... you were with Mr. Tilton during the time he was outside on the ledge. Mr. Tilton? Oh, yes, yes, of course. He was registered as Jarrett, but his real name was Tilton. Oh, I see. Yes, sir, I was with him. You gave him some water. He was thirsty, sir. And, and you drew the water from the tap in his room? No, sir, there wasn't a glass in there. Oh? I ran next door and got it from the gentleman in there. Mr. Tilton was in room 711, and the occupant of 713 was... A Mr. Smith, sir. Smith? Make a note of that, will you, Muffin? I've got it, sir. I'd like to talk to Mr. Smith. Oh, sir, I've cleared up his room. He, he left the hotel last night. I see. Miss Wales. Yes, sir? Did you see Mr. Smith? put anything into the glass of water? No, sir. All right. What do you do with the rubbish in the waste paper baskets when you clean the rooms? It's burnt, sir. Immediately? Yes, sir. Can you give me a, a description of Mr. Smith? Well, uh, he was quite tall, about your height, I'd say, sir. Black hair, medium weight, sharpish face. Would you recognize him if you saw him? Oh, yes, sir. All right, that will be all for the present. Thanks very much. Not at all, sir. Come out in the hall, Muffet. Miss Wales wants to get back to work. Well, sir? Smith, Muffet. <laughs> a convenient name, if one wished to remain anonymous. Yes, sir. And she could have been describing Mr. Richard Tilton. It had occurred to me at the time, sir. Yes, exactly. Well, I hope that Mr. Smith was more original than to use the first name of John. Mr. Smith, as it turned out on the hotel register, was not original. The name was John Smith, and the address was in Huddersfield. We put out an alarm and awaited developments. The next morning at the yard, I found a rather surprising visitor in my office. Well, sir, good morning. Cursed place. Smells of the law. Where's my son? Richard, with a friend in North Kensington. You've notified me. Well, I don't think he wanted to worry you. Nonsense. Wasted. The body was Edward's, wasn't it? Yes. I knew it would be. How did you know? Because I spoke to him in Lizard Town a week ago. Why didn't you tell me that before, sir? I didn't want to. There'd been enough unhappiness in my house as it was. Where had he been? Travelling. I suppose he had his own reasons not to let us know that he was still alive. He phoned me at Lizard. Wanted to come home. And what did you tell him, Mr. Tilton? Told him to stay away. We didn't want him there. And then? He said... The only reason he had returned was because of Amanda. He wanted her back. I told him it was too late, that she'd married Richard. I told him to go away. He wanted nothing more to do with him. Go on, sir. Well, that's all. I wouldn't say. Mr. Tilton, your son was killed by a fall from the seventh-story window ledge of his hotel. Window ledge? Suicide. He killed himself. Well, can't be helped. I've forgotten about him. He wasn't my son anymore. I did the right thing to send him away. You didn't tell your daughter-in-law of your conversation? No, absolutely not. We'd already done enough to her. What do you mean, Mr. Tilton? Amanda is not well, Inspector. She couldn't get over the shock of Edward's death at sea. She waited a long time until she married Richard... Too long. Are you saying that she was still in love with Edward even after she married Richard? The false memory she loved. Edward was never what she thought. I know. I was his father. Mr. Tilton, 
Where was Richard the night Edward died? In Falmouth, visiting Amanda. I beg your pardon. Amanda is in a sanatorium and has been for two years. Are you sure that is where he was? Yes. He sees her every Saturday. Edward did not commit suicide, Mr. Tilton. He was poisoned. We're looking for a murderer. Then the tall and grim-looking old man who had tried so hard to remain stern and unforgiving broke down. I left him alone in the office to regain his composure. We put through a trunk call to the sanatorium at Falmouth and learned that as Richard Tilton was such a regular visitor there, he was no longer required to sign the register. We should have to wait until the nurse on duty could be contacted. It was then ten o'clock. At exactly a quarter past two, I received a phone call from King's Cross Station. They were holding a man in the station master's office. It was Mr. John Smith. Now, now, what's all this? Mr. Smith, you resided at the Queen's Hotel in room 713 two days ago. Of course I did. I missed my train. Now, what's all this about? You know that the man fell to his death from the room next to yours on that night? Do I know? He owes me. I was watching him. Of course I know. I saw him fall. You drew a glass of water for him at the request of the chamberman. I did. That glass of water contained poison, Mr. Smith, and was responsible for the victim's death. Poison? Me? Murder? I didn't even know this Jarrett chap. Ah, but you know his name. Of course I do. I read it in the papers. I was there, wasn't I? I saw him fall. You would never seen him before then? No, never. <sighs> Why did you leave the hotel immediately after the death, Mr. Smith? Well, what would you have done, I ask you? Could you sleep in a room what was next to a man who killed himself, I ask you? You moved and went to another hotel? Yes, the Winchester. Very well. I want a written statement from you concerning these facts, and until further notice, I shall require your presence in London. You can't do that. I'm a salesman. I'm supposed to be in Hull tomorrow. I've already missed my train. I ask you, what am I going to tell the boss? I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. I haven't the remotest idea. You may go now. All right, all right, all right. What do you think, sir? Well, we'll keep an eye on him. We'll have to catch him with the goods anyway. Well, I suppose that takes care of Richard Tilton, sir. The fact that there is a John Smith who was in that hotel room. No, not entirely. Richard still has the strongest motive. The wife? He might have learned that Edward was still alive. Well, even so, sir. Why murder a man who's about to commit suicide? Ah, that's a question that's troubled me too, Moffat. The sanatorium at Falmouth phoned soon afterwards and established beyond any doubt that Richard Tilton had been there at the time of his brother's death. Now we had to search for another motive, possibly that of revenge. A phone call brought Cedric Tilton to Scotland Yard. Mr. Tilton, Richard mentioned that there was a man in Lizard who had been killed in a fight with your son. That's just one of the things that Edward did which I want to forget. Well, I'm sorry, sir. I must ask you these questions. Richard was of the opinion that Edward was guilty and should have been prosecuted. It's true. It's my fault that he wasn't. I testified for self-defense. It was not self-defense. It was murder. But if you are intimating that at this late date I took the law into my own hands and did away with my son, you're mistaken. You realize, sir, that you will have to answer to the charge of perjury. A worthless perjury. A worthless son. We have reason to believe that the killing must have preyed on Edward's mind. Uh, what was the name of the victim? Wales. Wales? Mr. Tilton? Yes. His name was David Wales. It's Wales. Nora. Oh, hello, Inspector. Miss Wales, why did you poison Edward Tilton? Because I was afraid he wouldn't jump. You knew that he was the man who killed your father, didn't you? Yes, I knew. I knew the minute I saw him. When was that? The afternoon he came here. Did you plan to kill him then? Oh, no, I, I was never going to kill him until that night. I'd finished dusting and 
I saw him go into his room. I was done for the day, and I wanted to go in and tell him that I knew who he was, that I hadn't forgotten what he'd done. Did you face him? No. When I went in, he was already out on the ledge. I saw him there. What did you do? I went over to the window and just watched. Then he saw me. He didn't know me, but he wanted to talk. You said that you wanted him to jump? I did. But I wanted him to think about it first. About everything that made him unhappy enough to do it. He talked about his wife and where he'd been all these years and how his father wouldn't let him come home. Did you try to make him come in? Oh, no. Only when somebody was in the room. Otherwise, I just listened. Then I began to think that he wouldn't jump at all. So when he asked for a glass of water, I knew what to do. I got some cockroach powder from the store cupboard, and I put it in the glass of water I got from Mr. Smith. You see, there wasn't a glass in Mr. Tilton's room. I have to put you under arrest, Nora. Oh, that's all right. I know you do. But it isn't as if I'd murdered him, is it? He wanted to jump, and I just helped him. That's all. There, in the corridor of a London hotel, we heard the simple statement of guilt from a little chambermaid with no fear or hatred in her eyes. There was only a smile of final triumph. Pursuit. And the pursuit is ended. Remember, friends, to make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. There's lots of cooling, real mint flavor in every stick. And chewing Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert. You feel better, work better, get more fun out of doing things. So indoors, outdoors, wherever you go, keep some healthful, refreshing Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Pursuit, brought to you by Wrigley Spearmint Gum, is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis and written by Gil Dowd and Anthony Ellis. Music was composed and conducted by Marlon Skiles. John Daner stars as Inspector Peter Black with Raymond Lawrence as Sergeant Moffat. Also featured in the cast were Eileen Erskine, Harold Hughes, Jack Edwards, Byron Kane, Herb Butterfield, and William Johnstone. Pursuit! The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoy tonight's story of Pursuit and that you're enjoying Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. We invite you to join us next week at this same time when Pursuit will bring you another dramatic story of the famous Inspector Peter Black of Scotland Yard, relentlessly hunting down those whose disordered passions breed violence and murder. Another story of man hunting man when we bring you Pursuit. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.